guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete, and guess what? We have that largest available BMW here in the United States. This is it, this is a BMW X7 M50i. But before we get into this mouthful of an SUV name, and of course, twin turbo V8 performance, let's talk about what's going on here. BMW, they have played their cards very well when it comes to SUVs. Of course, they got the X5, the X6, the X3, the X4. It just made sense, especially here in the United States, to bring in a large, full-size three-row SUV. Now, what vehicles would this compete against? Obviously, the original heavy hitters, Cadillac Escalade and the Navigator, Lincoln Navigator. But you know what? I want to specifically focus on the Lincoln because believe it or not, Lincoln was first with the idea to have a full-size luxury SUV. So let's go ahead, let's dive into this 2022 M50i X7 and see, is it a better luxury performance SUV than the Navigator Black Label? Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, the style. You know that it's a BMW simply by the way it looks. At the front of the business, you're gonna get that BMW laser light technology. The way that you know that it has it is from that light blue accent on the interior of the headlight housing. We got LED headlights and LED daytime running lamps. Working our way down, I hope you like that F word. No, not that F word, you sicko. I'm talking about functionality. We have functional side air curtains, corner air curtains here, and also massive functional air intakes for the heat exchangers that are right behind this area here. I love the nice aluminum finish. You even have exterior, more exterior LED lighting. And when you're comparing this to the BMW uh, to the, the BMW to the Lincoln, the Lincoln seems a little bit more, as I would say, fuddy-duddy. This one definitely feels more sporty and luxurious at the same time. Now, as we come across that massive grill. It's funny because this grill is not that massive considering how big the vehicle is. I think the grill on the M3 and the M4 is actually larger, but you have that traditional shape to the grill, the aluminum finish. If you're wondering, well, Joe, why is it all blocked off? You have these vertical slots, but if you look closely, these are actually shutters. These shutters open and close to allow more or less air to flow through for cooling. We got our forward facing camera, little bit of gloss black, more functionality, but what I love is how they did the styling of the front to match the other vehicles in their lineup. Definitely that German luxury performance and not that fuddy-duddy old feeling. Now when you get up onto the hood, one of my favorite parts is how they kind of teardrop it right into where you have that kidney-shaped grill design, the BMW badge, and then just very clean exterior styling. A little bit smaller than the Navigator. This is not as large as the Navigator, but wait until you see what's underneath the hood. As we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So you're gonna get these massive BMW wheels. It says even BMW individual wheels on this 2022. And what makes sense, this is a 2022, 22 inch wheel. So you got massive 22 inch wheels. You can see those calipers big as Papa Smurf, massive pistons there. And that's going to help kind of slow down this big beast of a vehicle. If you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of the tire? Up front, you got 275 on the width, 40 series sidewall. And you do, of course, have BMW's patented X drive all wheel drive system, adaptive suspension, all four corners. And I like the way everything is painted everything around the fender opening. Now, as we come down the side, you do have this stylish venting on the fender. And I do like the way they took the design and brought it down into the door. And it's that aluminum finish. So it matches nicely with what's at the front of the vehicle. You can see the size. I'm six feet tall, the size of this three row SUV. Aluminum finish on the mirror caps. With your turn singles, you got 360 degree cameras all the way around. I like the way it's got the gloss black at the top and bottom. Really gives it that overall sporty feel. You got gloss black raised roof rails. You could put kayaks up top. You could put a cargo carrier. Of course, 
We have mirrors that are going to fold in nicely. There's that nice aluminum finish there. And then working our way towards the rear, just clean German style. Large quarter window. I like the way they flare out the trim. And then out back, I want to focus on the rear tire here. The reason why is you got three 15s. Three, that's the width of the tires on my Shelby GT350R on this X7. Remember, the all-wheel drive system, it's rear-wheel drive based, just like on the Navigator, but it will send power to the front wheels as needed. And 315s, that's just freaking, that's like two steamrollers going down the road. As we swing it around back, it's a little hit or miss for me. I wish that they would, have, especially since this is an M50i, not a true M vehicle, but definitely more performance. I wish they would have extended out this roof spoiler and then got rid of this guy, tucked it up underneath. So I am gonna zonk those two things, but I do like the M50i badge. Lots of history with the M colors, LED lighting with the silver trim. It runs all the way across to the X7 badge on the other side, and then working our way all the way down to the ground level. Look at the massive exhaust openings. You have decorative trim rings, but you have quad tip exhaust lurking behind those decorative trim rings. A little bit of the aluminum, some nice metallic gray finish, and then really just nice and clean from the back. But why don't we pop the hood and talk horsepower numbers of this X7. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have two hydraulic hood struts. Underneath the hood, what's interesting is both the Navigator, Black Label, and this vehicle both have twin turbos, but that's where the similarities end. Under the hood, first of all, very tasteful engine cover, that M Performance badge, like I said, twin turbos. We're looking at a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 pumping out 523 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a ZF 8-speed automatic with the all zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. Vehicle does weigh 5,950 pounds. MPGs 15 in the city, 21 on the highway. If you want to tow, you could tow up to 7,500 pounds. Now, if you're comparing this to the Lincoln Navigator Black Label, that has a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, 449 horsepower, 510 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 in 5.2 seconds. Little better MPGs, 18 in the city, 22 on the highway. What I like about underneath the hood, besides the engine cover, it's a tasteful engine cover, is I like the way you can see all the bracing. They really put some beefy bracing to stiffen the front end of this beast up. But while we go ahead, we got a V8. Let's fire it up and hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 BMW X7 M50i. I know we're comparing this to the Lincoln Navigator black label, but you could also compare this to the Escalade. Obviously, the uh, big old Yukon Denali, but really where I like to put it up against is the Navigator because they're both twin turbos. One's a V8, one's a V6. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I need an SUV. I had one too many kids. I can't get a sports car, but I, I, I like the way the performance numbers sound on this thing. How much is it? MSRP is a little over $100,000. Check out Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete's website to get their price on this vehicle. But let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. I like the way it's nice and clean. You got that contrast stitching all the way up top. The bright silver around the unlock and lock switch gear. You got two memory seat settings, the Harman Kardon sound system, the wood trim. And if you notice that little line in the silver trim there, that's ambient lighting. Door pocket, it's a good size. It just gets a little tight. So maybe just keep it to a foot long. Don't put two foot long subs in there, but you can get your super big gulp, of course, Mountain Dew. Now going from the door panel to the dash, more of that great stitching more of the wood trim, 12.3 inches of visual pleasure smack dab in your face with this infotainment system. Obviously, it's got navigation, Apple CarPlay, and all that good stuff. I throw it in a reverse, 
lots of cameras, very clear on the resolution, 360 degree on that camera technology. You got the automated parking and the backup assistant. And of course, it's all touchscreen. You hit car, we could go into our driving information. I like the way it's white to match our white BMW. And there's all the performance gauges. Then you go right back to home. Voila, like you, we're never even there. We got our dual climate, heated seats, but no ventilated seats. That's a big zonk. And we got three stages of heated seats, just no ventilated seats. That's a, that's a big shame shame. Everybody knows BMW's name. We got our AC controls right here. And then we got our radio controls, nice and slim. The wood trim, I'm not really a fan of the sheen, that varnish on it, but I do like the ambient lighting. And watch this, open sesame, wireless charging. You got a place for two Snickers so you don't get hangry. USB, two cup holders, and then you got your BMW key fob. Simple to the point. It's got the BMW Motorsport colors. Remember, this is not a, a true M performance vehicle, but it does have performance. This is going to control that ZF 8 speed automatic. You got your iDrive control knob. You can actually raise and lower the height of the X7 all by the flick of your middle finger or your index finger or even your pinky. Start stop button, Sport, Comfort, Eco Pro, Adaptive, more ambient lighting. One, two, three, bombs away. What do we got? USB-C, and you get enough room in there, I would say, for 230 Lego pieces. And this would be the perfect vehicle to take you and your kids to Legoland, which is really not that far from me. So if you go to Legoland, stop by here in Clearwater, maybe we'll get a picture or something together. We can say hello and talk about cars. Leather on the seats, nice soft material, the perforated, not a lot of bolstering, but that's to be expected. You got your electric seat controls on the side there. And then guess what? I hope you are friends with Mr. Cantera down the street. You know Alcantara? Because we got Alcantara headliner. And then we got this massive, I mean, look at the shade on this thing. It throws lots of shade. And that panoramic sunroof. More glass than the skyscraper down in Tampa. That's how much glass there is. And I like the way it's just one touch. Look, mom, no hands. Close it up. But why don't you come over here? I'm sitting over here dying to show you what I get to see. Come over to the business end behind the wheel of this X7. Hi guys, business time behind the wheel. You do have two memory seat settings. I like the way you have this nice little M50i aluminum sill plate that does illuminate at night. Can't see it right now, but when the sun goes down, that's when it's time to party. We got a nice aluminum dead pedal brake pedal and throttle. So they do a good job on the pedal box. Seat controls, very easy to get to. And I'm telling you, you can move this seat 20 different ways from Sunday. I'm six feet tall, I'm swimming in space. Now remember, the Navigator does have more space, but the Navigator, like I said, feels more fuddy-duddy. So you tell me, are you a fuddy-duddy or are you not a fuddy-duddy? I don't know. Steering wheel, what I do know is I like the leather, Stitching is pretty good. I wish they would have done some contrast stitching. It is heated, and they did do some stitching on the horn button. You have these large paddles that are plastic behind the wheel to go up and down the eight-speed automatic. And then you do have a digital dash with all the important information. You go into sport mode, watch this, changes. I like the way it has that different kind of readout to the gauges, head-up display, and the steering wheel is electric tilting and telescoping. But why don't we go ahead, up front feels great. Let's try the mid row and see how your passengers are gonna enjoy you hauling the mail in this X7. All right guys, back seat time. The third row is yet to come. We're in this mid row. One of the things I like right off the bat are the AC vents that are built into the frame. Very, very smart. And you got the Alcantara, which is nice. Backs of the seats, you do have a USB-C, perfectly placed so nobody's gonna trip over any cords. We have a super size pocket on each side. You could easily put, I would say, four Whammo Frisbees. They gotta specifically be Whammo. And you definitely want to have Frisbees for you, for your kids whenever you stop because then they could get out and like entertain themselves while you're busy fueling up or taking care of business. And you know what I'm talking about. The back command center, we do have rear AC vents, dual climate control in the back, heated seats, but no ventilated seats once again as a Zonk. We got a place for two Twinkies, a 12 volt, and two USB-Cs, two more USB-Cs on the bottom. 
I got another one back here. So they got you covered connectivity. They also got you covered when it comes to security. Let's say you're at the mall and your teenage daughter's in the back seat and some guy that goes to school with her is staring, peeping in the window while she's sitting here. Besides kicking his butt, what you could do is as you're sitting here, just hit this button and you got power shades that come up and keep that creep, that peeping creep out of the spotlight by bringing up that shade. Obviously you do it for both sides. Pull this down, hard as a German rock. There's a little bit of sticky goo there. Somebody's been having too much fun in this back seat. Open it up though. You could easily put a one pound bag of Skittles. Just rip that sucker open, pour it in there. That way your passengers can see the rainbow and taste the rainbow. Two cup holders and this piece of trash. We'll get that out of here. That's not included. Uh-oh, I don't wanna, don't wanna break that, but you're gonna go like that. Put it back. I didn't do it. Lots of room, power sliding seats and power reclining seats. Why don't we though? It's about that time. I'm ready to fold myself up like a ham sandwich and get into that third row. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, third row time. We got three rows and this is where right about now I was sitting in a Lincoln Navigator. As you can see, my knees aren't high too much. They're not up too high, but this seat is, it's too close to my knees. Now I could pay who's ever sitting here and you know how I feel about these headrests. I could pay whoever's sitting here, maybe a 20 spot to have them slide forward, but I figure I'll let you see what it looks like while we're back here. The great news is you do have a power shade for the glass roof back here. And it's nice that even I get to see the rainbow. It's not just about the people in the middle row or the front row. I get to see the rainbow as well. I even have it, you can't see it, but I have my own AC controls and heated third row seat. That's pretty crazy. AC vents, little tiny cup holders, even some ambient lighting back here is kind of cool but not the most comfortable place that I wanna be. But why don't we go ahead, let's check out the cargo area because I wanna take this freaking vehicle for a spin. Right, guys, cargo area time, we're gonna hit that button. Nice electric assist, this has that split opening tailgate. So what's nice about that is you can put your groceries in and they're not gonna roll out. If you need more room, very simple. You just hit the bottom button there and it gives you that nice loading dock. You have all of the switch gear to fold down the seats and I wanted to keep all the seats up for you so that you could see exactly how much room that we have. So on the passenger side, you do have a 12 volt and you do have a little cargo net there for about five Twinkies. Um, what do we got though for room? You're looking at 12.8 cubic feet with the third row up, fold the third row down 48.6 cubic feet, fold down the mid row and you have 90.4 cubic feet, way less than the Navigator. The Navigator, when you fold down all three rows, you have over a hundred cubic feet of space. But you know what? Let's go ahead and you close that up first. We hit that. If you're ready, I'm ready. We got twin turbo VA power. Let's go for a little on throttle spin. I had this BMW X7 M50i. Right away, the amount of power that you feel from this twin turbo V8 I mean, obviously the Lincoln Navigator is not gonna be able to touch it. But with that being said, the Lincoln Navigator does have more room. Now on the interior, well laid out uh, with the large infotainment system, large digital display. It's your familiar BMW layout and I think most people are gonna enjoy that. Even with the changes that they made to the Navigator, for some reason with the Navigator, it doesn't feel as contemporary and as fresh as this X7. Now, with the all-wheel drive, you get a nice head-up display that just adds to the confidence, allows you to focus out the windshield, but uh, I think it's ready to see what this thing can do acceleration-wise. If you're ready, I'm ready. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I mean, an SUV should not perform like this, especially one this size. But like I said, with the all-wheel drive, with those massive, meaty 315s out back, and of course the X-Drive system, it, it sends the power 
from the rear to the front very effectively to where you're not gonna get any slip, you're gonna get freaking all grip, that's for sure. The eight speed fires off the shots, lightning quick, each gear like a machine gun. And then now we're gonna see how this beast handles. That's what I wanna know. But the sound is just sublime. <sighs> I like when you get that shift. It's got that nice kick to it. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Oh, right, here we go. On the brakes. Those massive Papa Smurf calipers. Look at this. Powering out of the turn. Like I said, if you got a ton of kids and you can't have that sports car, this is what BMW is bringing performance-wise to their SUVs, especially a full-size SUV like this one. Nicely done, good feedback. The brakes, I mean, look at this. You stop on a Euro, you give everybody change. I mean, it's that, it's that good. Oh, throttle, here we go. Holds the line very clean, very smooth. Let's do it from this stop sign. We need to feel it again. All right, throttle, here we go. Wow. <laughs> it's like, how can you not smile? behind the wheel of this beast. It just defies Sir Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, and all the rest of the scientists when it comes to the law of physics, because a machine this large should not do what it does. But it does it, and it does it well. Our throttle, here we go. On those brakes, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine how fast you could get the kids to school in this thing. And then, yeah, you are getting some body roll, but that's to be expected. This is not a true M car, plus the center of gravity is up very high. So you're going to get some roll, but the amount of stick and grip is spectacular. And then the comfort, getting to everything is well within reach. I just need some freaking ventilated seats in this thing, especially for the price. I mean, come on. I know you could probably option it in, but aren't we already high enough up the option food chain when it comes to the price on this thing? But we're gonna get back to Jaguar Land Rover, St. Pete, and wrap this one up. So I'm hoping that this has been good for you because it's definitely been good for me. We're gonna wrap this one up. I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a day here at Jaguar Land Rover, St. Petersburg. Definitely want to thank Miro, Jeff, and the rest of the crew getting us this 2022 BMW X7 M50i. Let me know what you think. Has BMW done enough to make this that luxury performance SUV you should buy? Or are you willing to sacrifice some of the performance for more room in that Lincoln Navigator of that black label trim? Put your response in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We definitely got to give it up to Stephen Flood. Stephen Flood Photography, working that camera like a champ. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.